Hello, welcome back to the Fish Locker out on the boat. Now this is just going to be a quick session. And all I'm doing is I'm just going to play around with, hopefully, some lures. If I can find some, some live baits. So we're targeting Pollock, Bass and Brass. As you can see, it is a bit brisk. At the moment we've got wind and tide together, so we're drifting very fast. I'm hoping that as the tide drops away, it will just be the wind and that will set us right. All we're doing is we're drifting over patches of mixed ground at the moment because I'm trying to feather up some live launch. Now I have a dead launch out on a float at the moment and I have a little lure just trailing behind the boat. As soon as we find some live baits, I will show you the rigs. If we find some live baits. Just snapped on a little slow jig and this is literally the second drop. I'll show you the low when I get it to the surface. But this almost feels like a coddling. Oh no, it's a big balling rod. Just kiting about in the tide. Ball and Rass are covered in spikes <laughs> and they're always, they always wait until you do this. They always wait until you get them on the boat and then they just stack on rah, rah, start racking about all over the place. I don't know if you can see them colour blue in, in its tail. Like a lovely iridescent blue. But there is a Ball and Rass and there is the jig I caught it on. I do love these assist hooks. They are great for hookups. And all you do with them, there's a couple of different ways to fish them, depending on the type you get. You get slow or fast. This is a slow jig, so you, you jig it up and then slowly drop it. I'll show you. But you're fishing it close to the bottom and it flutters in such a way. So when you pull it up, it jumps up in the water, and when you slowly lower it down, it flutters down. Yeah, Ball and Rush usually put up more of a fight than that, that was just like a slow noddy. It imitates a little fish. So it shows you how aggressive those ballon are, doesn't it? Just coming up, coming across the flat bit. Gonna be going up a little bit of a bank. This wind was supposed to be westerly. This is almost straight southerly. But I know the wind was going to be in this direction when I got here. I would have gone somewhere else. Fishing a float rig like that, you are better with a live bait. A dead bait does fish, and with the moving of the waves, it does move it around. A live bit better. <laughs> so 
thought it was fighting well. Because it was two of them. Two little pollock. There's one of them. I have managed to catch one live bait. Oh, we will see how that goes. I've tried to drift back over the same patch of patch of feed to try and catch a couple more before I before I go and try and catch something bigger. I would have liked to have had three. Three live sand deals. Pollock that size today. Just can't seem to find those sundials. a lot like a pollock but isn't a pollock oh, nice little coley right I'm running out my only live bait just on a simple sliding float rig and this is going to be the last drift I have because the wind's picking up Fishing's not great. And we've got other things to be doing today. So I'll give it one last chance. Drifting at 2.6 knots now. It is too fast really. Line and the, the lines that light and the hooks are that small. Oh. Size of the hook that it's taken. There, look. <laughs> right. It's not a bad fish, is it? Look at the size of that mouth massive predator eye and you can see like got quite an underbite that's how you tell the difference between that and a coalfish because Pollock has got an underbite a larger eye and this lateral line this la this line you can see where my fingers are on a coalfish is straight on a Pollock it's not the reason I keep looking back at the sounder the area of ground that we're going over is very up and down. For instance, we were in 80 feet, we're now in 49 feet. That's how much of a peak it's just come up. And now we're back in 58 feet. There's a 
fish shaking its head. It might be a bass. We're expecting pollock. Oh, there's a bit of colour. Oh, it is a beautiful pollock. <laughs> There's the pollock and there's the live bait. See the chinook's just stuck in the corner of its mouth. There's the hook. There's the bait. A cracking fish to end on. Perfect. You can see the size of that mouth there why they have no trouble swallowing them sandals. Fantastic. I don't mind ending on that. Well, hello. Welcome back to the fish locker. Just dropped down on my first my first drop of the day and there's two little pollocks straight away there's the first one the second one's a lovely little lovely little ginger kelpie What I'm fishing for right now is I'm trying to fish for sand eels, lawns. To use as live baits. Whoop, whoop. Straight into another one. I think I've most definitely found another one. Yep. There you go. If they're here, then the bait's going to be here. Because they wouldn't be here for no reason. Hopefully we'll get half a dozen live lawns and then we will drift around with some live baits. See if we can't pick out a bass or a better pollock. Those pollock are a little bit small. Oh. Another one. That's what we're after. Live sand eel. So they are there. That's what all these pollock are feeding on. So if we can get ourselves half a dozen of them, we'll be laughing. It's more like it. True that time. Two more. Ah, that'll do. Call that a day. Now what we'll do is we'll head up, head up further onto the reef, rig one of these live sand eels, and drift over with a float. Just run out the live bait over there. I'm just going to try chucking a lure around over this little pinnacle that we've got. 
Just a really simple live bait rig. I've got a locked in bullet lead into about six or eight inches. I've got a 160 gram float, 160 or 140 gram float, about four foot of fluoro and a live launch. Pretty much, we're pretty much bang on slack water, so there's no movement in the tide. As soon as the tide picks back up again, that's when I hope that we're going to start seeing some fish. Of course, the tide's real slack. I've swapped over to a slow jig, and I picked up what I'm assuming is going to be a ras. Nice looking ballon ras. Got some lovely blue spots on its tail. What was all that was on? Just a little silver slow jig. Carry on this drift for another 50 yards. We're drifting really slow, half a knot. Carry it on for another 50 yards and then we'll loop back round and run it all again. What a lovely day out on the boat. Completely different day to yesterday. We're very slowly drifting up a mound. Currently in about 80 feet of water. My, my bait is set about 45 feet. 40 to 45 feet. At the moment it's about mid depth, but when we get up to the top of the rise it will be just four or five feet above it. Now in 60 feet. I hope you get to see the float go down. Try to try to manoeuvre the boat in such a way that you can see the float. You usually get two different types of bites when you're fishing with the float. You either get a positive bite I'm sure we just caught that guy a minute ago. You either get a positive bite where the float goes right under the water or you get one with a a fish picks up the bait and the weight and comes up in the water, in which case the float will lay down flat. You'll be able to see in a minute now, I mean, we've picked up to about a knot. That little bit of wind there has just picked our speed up. You'll see these, these fishing dans here, these fishing boys, how fast they go past the screen. That will show you how fast we're traveling. That is a sea cucumber. Let me get that on the boat. That is a first. A slimy sea cucumber. <laughs> I'll have to get a photo of that. Right. I'm trying to get all this slime off of here. I'll try that again. We've come well over the rise now, we're on the back side of it. We've just seen something on the bottom. I'm going to drop down here and try this, and then we'll go back and try that drift again. I 
Nice pollock on the slow jig. These assist hooks are fantastic. Give her a front hook myself now. Quite a lean fish, isn't it? Got a lovely colour on them. Fishing is slow. A screaming take as well. I'm not surprised because that is an absolute monster pollock. Couldn't risk lifting that on the trace. Look at the size of that fish. What an absolute brute. I really did have to wait for it, but I got it in the end. If you can go in through the gill like that. Going through the gill, you can turn the hook and then push it out. Like that. There you go. What a monster of a pollock. Did nick one of his gills with the with the hook, which is why he's bleeding a little bit. But they're they're tough fish. The gill I can see the gill's not not torn, it's just nicked. Go a thought with him and get him back. I've tried to recover it as best as I can. I'm afraid he's just not going back, look. He's got a little bit of flap in him, but he's just not got enough in him to go down. Come on, lad, give it a try. Give it a go. No. Now, unfortunately, I tried my best to revive that pollock, and it just wouldn't go back. The hook did nick one of its gills, so it did bleed a bit. Sometimes it happens. But one thing's for sure, this fantastic fish will gladly go to the table. We like to return as many fish as we can. But we'll happily take them for the table. Oop. I hope you saw that float go down there. They are great fun this. Fishing light though. Inshore reefs. On live baits. Oh, it's another monster pollock. Just flowing around it tide.
There's the hook. Just in the corner of its mouth. Another stunning chunky fish. Gorgeous, aren't they? This one again will be be eight nine pound. Go on, get yourself down. Come on, pick up. I'll have to go back for it. He's trying, he's trying. Oh, good lad. That's a bonus. Just needed a minute to catch his breath, didn't he? Fantastic. <laughs>